Hello, and welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast, and I am your host, Samuel. In this podcast, I interview top medical sales reps and leading medical sales executives across the entire country. And it doesn't matter what medical sales industry, from medical device to pharmaceutical to genetic testing to diagnostic lab, you name it, you will learn how to either break into the industry, be a top 5% performer within your role in sales, or climb the corporate ladder. Welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Samuel. And today we have with us another special guest, and he goes by the name of Zach Kasky. Now, what makes Zach's story that you're going to hear unique is he was already a pharmaceutical sales professional when he found us, and he wanted to get to top-level performance. He had been in a position for a number of years, and he just wasn't, you know what, I'm giving it all away. I'm not going to give it away. But what I will say is this guy not only got to top-level performance, he exceeded his own expectations. We knew he'd get there, but I'll save the rest for this interview. I love doing this. I love bringing people that have experienced what we do firsthand and experience the results of what we do and talk about it. I love every guest on my show, but something about these types of guests just has a special place in my heart. And I'm so glad that I can sit here right now and share this story with you. So without further ado, I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to save it for the interview. As always, we do our best to bring you guests that are doing things a little differently in the medical sales space. And I really do hope you enjoy this interview. Hey, Zach, how are we doing today? I'm doing well, Samuel, and yourself? I am fantastic. So today, before you say anything, Zach, today, this is a special treat because Zach was actually a client of the Medical Sales Builder. That's our sales training program here at Evarva Success. And he's going to talk a little bit about his history, what he's done, and of course, his experience with us. So Zach, with that, uh, let, why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, name is Zach Kasky. I work for, I'm a territory manager here at Primus Pharmaceuticals. I've been with the company for six and a half years, primarily covering Northern New Jersey. And I've also been covering Manhattan as well for the last year on top of that. Awesome. So, you know, pharmaceutical sales is, it's the selling of drugs. People know that, but there's different fields, there are different spaces. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what yours is in? Sure. I'm in the medical, in the medical dermatology space. What's been interesting with uh, my career at Primus is it's changed a lot in the six and a half years. When I first joined the company, we were primarily a heavy medical foods company. It's a pretty misunderstood uh, class of pharmaceutical in the me medical space. So with those products, I was calling into rheumatology, um, orthopedic, gynecology, and even vascular care as well. About a year and a half into that, uh, we pivoted pretty heavily into the dermatology space with the acquisition of Epicerum, which is a uh, non-steroidal product for uh, eczema, contact dermatitis, radiation dermatitis. And then during the pandemic and right around 2022, we doubled down into the space and got three other products that are pretty heavy medical dermatology products with uh, two topical steroids for plaque psoriasis with the Empoison Cernivo, and then also a non-steroidal product called Promiset for seborrheic dermatitis as well. So since then, it's been an interesting pivot. I went from calling on a lot of rheumatology and orthopedic to now spending north of 95% of my week and month in dermatology. Got it. So let's take it back. You were six and a half years with Primus. Were you working at a pharmaceutical company before Primus? I was not. So out of college, I actually got started my selling career with a company called St. Charles Trading. They're a, they are a company that focuses in the food ingredient distribution space. So what that means is they were they are a distributor of the raw materials to manufacturers that are manufacturing the foodstuffs that we see here in stores. So every time you're looking at the ingredient label on the back of the food that you're buying at a grocery store, I was selling those ingredients to those manufacturers in pallet to truckload quantities. When I started, it was actually based in Illinois. They allowed me the opportunity really early on in my career out of college to actually relocate to Baltimore mm -hmm. and cover the uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia area for them. Eventually, they pushed me a little further uh, north into New Jersey to kind of consolidate efforts. Unfortunately, the opportunity wasn't going where I wanted it to go. I then was able to land into uh, Primus from there. Got it. So where? how did you find us? 
what was going on in your career, what was going on in your life that made you, that even turned you on to us and then ultimately had us working together? Sure. So my territory in northern New Jersey is fairly large in terms of geographic size, and there's a lot of travel. There's a lot of traffic. So I spent a lot of my time listening to a lot of different podcasts across the, the broad spectrum. I stumbled upon yours, and I began to listen over the weeks and uh, over the months and such. And as that was happening, I was doing well at Primus. I wasn't knocking it out of the park, but I wasn't in like dead last or in the bottom third. I was right there, nice and nice and average, right at, at um, right at that average point. I was getting kind of tired of being in that middle part of the pack. I really wanted to invest in myself and get to that next level because we were changing from that old legacy medical food business into dermatology. There was a huge opportunity there because when we made that change, everybody really kind of went back to scratch and started almost at zero. Mm -hmm. So where I was competing against some of these reps that were selling medical foods for five, 10, even some up to close to 12 plus years, it was a little harder to compete against that at a certain level. So with that change, I was figuring it's time. I'm, I played football. I love being coached. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and try to invest in myself here and take advantage of the opportunity. Beautiful. How many years were you into Primus when you found us? I found you guys probably around it had to have been around 2019. It was definitely prior to the pandemic. The, everything pre-pandemic just feels like a different lifetime ago uh, at this point. So I ended up starting talking to you directly right around August of 2022, I believe. Okay. So you had been with Primus for how many years? Six and a half. Mine has been. It had to have been close to at least four, at least four. Yes. Got it. Got it. So talk to us, you know, what was your experience sure. like? Explain for people listening right now, you know, our audience consists of people that want to get into the industry, but a lot of artists consists of people that want to, just like you, take things to the next level. Uh, explain what happened with us in the program and what were your results? It really helped ignite it ignite the ex the it helped ignite the engine that was just stuck in neutral. Um, it was able to help keep me more accountable with the action plans that you would implement throughout whether it was, I'm going to a P, uh, POA in September, let's work on strategies and ways that you can help stand out. And towards the, even towards the end of 2022, where I was right on the cusp of either making it into President's Club that year or not, we were able, you and I were able to work on an actual action plan for that final month of December to make sure that I was comfortably in place. I went from being in maybe ninth place where the top eight make it, and once the December numbers published, I was in six. So, and when I looked back at the data and did some forensics, a lot of it happened in December where I was really pushing hard with uh, the mentoring and coaching that you were providing. Fantastic. You know, when you think about it, if you were to sum up in three things you got out of, out of our coaching together, I mean, the results were the evident. The results, you got to win a right. circle, that was the goal. But if you were to just say three things that you got that you still now continue to do because you not only have gotten to President's Club that year, but the following year you did it again, correct? Mm -hmm. That so, is correct. So you, you literally became a consistent high performer. What three things could you say you learned in our program that you took with you and you continue to use today? I mean, part of it is once you kind of taste success, you want to continue to have it. So you end up then keeping that high level of performance because you then realize what it took to get there the first time and you have to be able to protect your uh, turf as well. The other thing I took out of it, I got more comfortable talking to people and asking help. I didn't ask for as much help as I probably could earlier on in my career where it would have made a huge difference. Since then, I was able to begin to get mentored by somebody that's really high up at Primus Pharmaceuticals and has even been on your podcast uh, in the past and that introduced me into different ways that was really able to help me expand even further. So I'm trying to think of a third right now, but those were really kind of the two biggest ones. That's awesome. That is awesome. So then, you know, I guess we'll get right to it. For those listening, what would you share with them to kind of give them, plant the seed of getting involved with us? What, what would you share with them on why they should look into our program and take our program to get to the next level in their sales performance? It's always best to be coachable and to find different ways in improving. If you feel like you're stuck after a handful of years and you're doing the same thing over and over again, Einstein said it the best, that's the definition of insanity. So why not try something different? If it doesn't work, then at least you can say you tried and you made a consistent effort to try to improve. 
Uh, the same thing happens every year when people try to lose weight. You only lose weight if you put an effort or change, change a habit in your life. So the best way to do that is to talk to people that have experience doing that already. Excellent. Well, let's talk a little bit more about your role in, in pharmaceutical sales. Sure. You know, for those that are interested in being in pharmaceutical sales, you know, you've been in the game now six and a half years. That's a, that's a, that's a lengthy time to understand what, right. what goes in and what comes out. What would you share for those listeners right now that are considering getting into pharmaceutical sales about what they need to be able to do and what kind of qualities they should possess? You ultimately uh, need to be coachable and need to be able to show that on the front end, especially the managers. Man, that's how I actually ended up getting my job at Primus. It's funny. I remember back to my first interview there. I flubbed it twice in the first in the first 30 some odd seconds. So I get there. I didn't have a resume printed. So I tried to print one up off the hotel printer. And of course, the printer was in horrible condition and it was creating streaks everywhere. But I had to go with it because I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, then the second time, as I'm up in the room interviewing uh, with the, gen uh, the regional manager at the time and uh, another sales rep, I was asked the simple question, just to try to kind of test your sales skill. How do you sell a tire or how, uh, try to sell me a tire? Mm -hmm. I flubbed that so badly. It had the awkward pauses, the deer in the headlights look. I, we've, we've all been there. We've all seen it Absolutely. happen. But what was really cool and key about that is they is they hit pause. And they asked me, what do you think you did wrong? And I answered honestly. And then we redid it with those things in place. Mm. And what I kind of found out after the entire interview process, which involved more than those two gentlemen, is that one of the reasons why I was chosen is it did, as I was showing that I was coachable. So it's really important to really show that in the interview. And if a regional manager doesn't care about that, it might not be the greatest opportunity. They might not really be able to help you um, grow and succeed as well. Um, that's the biggest one. And once you have the job, I mean, I believe routing and having a plan is really the secret sauce to really growing into the job as well. So being able to, in the interview, show that you are great at, I think planning and stuff is probably the hardest part of this job, bar none, uh, trying to process and keep all the different pieces of information you learn from office hours to where providers are located, what days they are in, what their access is like, different things like that is really hard. So being able to show that you have a plan or a type of program that you've used successfully in the past to organize and collate that information does make a huge difference as well. Absolutely. Excellent. So you're making amazing things happen. Time President's Club winner. You know, how do you make it happen with your social life? Family man, single guy, let the world know what you got going on. So if they have the same situation, they know they can do it too. Yeah. So I do have a young family. I have been married to my wonderful wife, Jen. And then we had a little four-year-old girl named Riley. Fantastic. And, you know, would you say that it's in pharmaceuticals, how would you describe the work-life balance? It can be pretty manageable and nice, especially if you lit, especially if you're in a territory that can be very focused within a day. I know not every pharma job has a territory that's just in one state or one metropolitan area, but the vast majority of them are. When I was at St. Charles Trading, I was working in a job where I was covering three different states because there's just so few main food manufacturers out there in the world. So from Tuesday to Thursday, I would typically be on the road uh, every night and things of that nature, which I can't even imagine trying to do that now as a four-year-old. I had at that house, I was married to my wife, Jen, but it's a little easier when it's just two of you. Mm -hmm. So Actually, pharma helped make that easier to decide to have a kid and also to then be able to parent and things of that nature. Um, it's gotten a little busier as of late with covering two territories now, but we've been able to find ways of making it work. Fantastic. And, you know, the question we get a lot, too, is, for people that are interested in pharma is the travel. How much traveling is involved? Why don't you share with the audience what travel looks like for you now? And, and, may, and maybe not because you're in two territories, but if right. you just had one territory, what does travel look like? Um, so usually I can be up and out the door by around eight, even without two territories uh, in combined there. There's still a decent amount of traffic in New Jersey, especially now that the uh, pandemic is kind of uh, abated for the most part and work life and work and traffic is kind of returned to normal. But I'll be out the door by probably no later than seven, 730 
Some days I have to drop Riley off. Some days my wife is able to when she works in the office. And then from there, I'm out making calls. I try to get to at least eight different providers a day. Maybe there's a lunch sprinkled in there or a coffee or a breakfast of some sort of nature. So a lot of it's just kind of going from office to office via car and uh, calling on everybody that's that I'm currently working on trying to develop and grow. And last things I'll ask you, what is the biggest challenge when it comes to pharma? Uh, kind of hitting back to the answer that I had previously, which is kind of having a great plan and having really good routing. Because the hardest thing to remember is even if even in just one territory is trying to keep track of every single provider out there and making sure that you're seeing them on a frequent basis. The biggest thing with um, providers is just trying to, they're human too. They're not going to remember every every time somebody's walked in the door and told them something, even if they find it incredibly valuable because they're seeing patients, they have young families too, they have personal lives. So you need to be able to sometimes hyper frequency and see them on a consistent basis to ensure that that message does begin to stick. Yeah. And I should have said this with the last question, but what do you love most about pharma? Um, it's provided pretty uh, lucratively uh, financially. So that has been great. I'm, Primus is pretty, um, pretty lucky with Primus where I can kind of pick and choose how my days work in terms of who I'm targeting and who I'm seeing. I truly am been able to call on uh, whatever provider I believe will bring us the most benefit as a company. And I do like the work-life balance and being able to be home every night as well. Fantastic. Well, Zach, it was awesome spending time with you today. You know, pharma is an exciting space to be in. Uh, I definitely tout it because that's where I started. And um, it's awesome to see that you worked with us, you, you experienced the program, and you went on to continue to make amazing things happen, uh, being a two-time President's Club winner. So congratulations to you. Thank you, Samuel. Absolutely. So we're going to do one more thing. We're going to have a lightning round. I'm going to ask you four questions. You have less than 10 seconds to answer. Are you ready? Sure. All right. First question, what is the best book you've read in the last six months? Uh, Sapiens, the book about by uh, Yuval Noah Harris that uh, kind of talks about the evolution of um, our species from the very beginning into practically the modern era. era. Um, it's a really great anthropological look at kind of human history almost. Interesting. I'll have to check that one out. Okay. Best TV or TV show or movie you've seen? In the last six months? Succession, by far. By you know, far. I've never seen that, but I have heard that it's good. If you're really into corporate, like, espionage and drama on that kind of, like, uh, level, it's it's really good. It's just so, so well written of a show and so well acted of a show. That's awesome. And then best meal you've had in the last six months? I'll have to go to, so it's a meal I have often. Uh, whenever I'm in the city, I always frequent um, the Oyster Bar in the, inside Grand Central Station. It's uh, look at, It's been around for as long as Grand Central Station has been around since like wow. the early 1900s. They have some of the freshest, oy some of the wow. freshest oysters in all of Manhattan. Wow. Okay. And so that's, that's what you get there, the oysters, or is there a specific dish? Well... Imagine like a diner, but with a lot of sea with seafood. So I'm always typically ordering something different, but oysters are always an absolute staple there for me. Awesome. And then last question, what's the best experience you've had in the last six months? Last six months, uh, being able to go to Sedona uh, last month for our executive sales trip. So at Primus, when you win Circle of Excellence, um, you're also part of a as a President's Club winner, you go on a trip where you actually have the opportunity to meet and discuss directly with the CEO about different things that you've seen in the field, different plans that they have at the home office, and really try to find ways in which the sales force and the home office can all both swim in the same direction. And this year, we were lucky enough to have it out in the Red Rocks of Sedona. Fantastic. Well, once again, Zach, it was awesome having you on the show, and we look forward to the wonderful things you're going to be doing out there in the pharma world. All right. Thanks, Samuel. You as well. Absolutely. And that was Zach Kasky. Great story, right? I love these stories. If you're out there and, and you're experiencing anything like Zach, uh, and, and remember, we have positioned ourselves to understand medical sales, right? So all of it, pharmaceutical, medical device, genetic and diagnostic testing, capital equipment, supplies, software. We've been blessed with the opportunity to have our hands in literally everything. And if you're out there and you want to dramatically increase your performance. 
for whatever reason, or, or maybe not even dramatically, you want to increase your performance and you know that there's a level you can reach, but for some reason it just hasn't gotten there, then go to evolveyoursuccess.com and you'll see the tabs on the homepage. You'll see improving sales performance, something that's specific to improving performance, sales performance, right there on the homepage. Click on that area. It's going to take you to an application. Fill out the application and have a conversation with one of our account executives. And let's get you to top tier performance. And then for those of you that are listening right now and thinking to yourselves, I just want to get into medical sales so I can have the opportunity to be a top performer. You already know what I'm going to say. Stop wishing, wondering, and hoping, and let's act on this. We are helping get people into positions left and right. Hundreds of people into positions left and right. Don't sell yourself short. Don't wish anymore. Let's do something about it, and let's get into a medical sales position, and let's go to evarvasuccess.com. Click on the tab right there in front of you on the home page. Fill out the application and have a discussion with one of our account executives. You know, one thing I don't really talk about is the criteria to, to be a client of ours. And I want to start sharing more about that because I think it's important. Right now, the medical sales industry is extremely competitive. So if you're considering enrolling in our program, remember, you need to have a clean driving record and you need to... Do what you can to ensure you don't have a prohibitive criminal record. And the last thing I'll say is we do prefer people with bachelor's degrees. Now, if you have an associate's degree, if you're working on your bachelor's degree, don't fear. You have an opportunity. And honestly, if you do not have a degree, you do have an opportunity in medical sales. But I, I need to tell you guys the reality of the environment. And the reality of the environment is these days, post-COVID, very many people want to be in medical sales positions. The average position, it's not crazy for the average position to have more than two to 300 applicants. So you can imagine that if, if there's that many people to choose from, how easy is it to narrow down the, the pool if you just say, okay, if you have a bachelor's degree, you're in. If you don't, you're not. Now, does that mean you can't if you do not? Absolutely not. We've helped people with associate's degrees. We've helped people with no degree. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. It will be more difficult. It will be more challenging. And you will hear more no's. That is simply the nature of the environment. So with that being said, for those of you that want to get into this profession, go to evarvasuccess.com, schedule some time with one of our account executives, fill out the application, and let's get you to where you want to be. And of course, in light of this episode, for those of you that are in this profession of medical sales and you want to improve that performance, then you already know where to go, evarvsuccess.com. As always, we do our best to bring you guests that are doing things differently in the medical sales space. And make sure you tune in next week for another episode of the Medical Sales Podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And remember, I have a couple programs that show you exactly how to break into the medical sales industry become a top performing medical sales professional, and also how to masterfully navigate your career to executive level leadership. Check out these programs and learn more at evolveyoursuccess.com. Stay tuned for more awesome content with amazing interviews.